Hello, my name is Dr. Harry Augenson, director of the Widener Observatory. I'll be your host for the Night Sky Rundown for November, where we will tell you about what's up in the sky this month. Hello, my name is Leon Mpecha, and I'll be your co-host. November finds the signature autumn group, the Great Square of Pegasus, high in the south around 8 p.m. The star at the square's northeastern corner, Alpha Rats, is actually the brightest star of neighboring Andromeda, but was borrowed to complete the square. Alpha Rats and Andromeda's next two brightest stars, Merak and Almac, plus Alpha Persei, Mirfak, form an arc which connects to Pegasus. Exactly below the Great Square's western edge is the bright whitest star, Fomalot in Pisces Austrinus, the southern fish. Looking toward the northeast, we find the unmistakable W shape of the constellation Cassiopeia, which uh, followed by Perseus, which represents the hero of mythology who rode the winged horse Pegasus and rescued Andromeda from Cetus, the whale or sea, sea monster. Cetus is the fourth largest constellation in the sky, but it contains mostly faint stars with the exception of Diptha on the western side and Menkar on the eastern side. One faint but significant autumn group is the zodiac constellation of Pisces, the fishes, located between Cetus and Pegasus. The two fishes are connected by a V-shaped pair of lines, which diverges around the great square of Pegasus. Pisces is not only a zodiac constellation, meaning that the sun passes through it during the course of a year, it also contains the vernal equinox, one of the two points in the sky where the ecliptic path crosses the celestial equator, resulting in equal durations of night and day. Following Pisces, the next zodiac constellation is Aries, the ram. Aries' two brightest members, Hamal and Sheraton, are easily spotted. Over two millennia ago, the vernal equinox resided in Aries. Due to the effects of precession, the Earth's slow wobble over a cycle of nearly 26,000 years, that point has since migrated westward into, uh, into Pisces, but it is still referred to as the first point of Aries. While the winter doesn't begin until next month, most of the winter stars become viewable before midnight. Low in the east, you can find the stars of Taurus, the bull, which contains the bright reddish star Aldebaran. To the, the right is the Pleiades star cluster, a compact group of stars shaped like a miniature dipper. Low in the northeast, to the left of Aldebaran, is the bright yellow-white star Capella, situated in the constellation of Auriga. Low in the southwest at nightfall, Saturn resembles a bright cream-colored star. Saturn sets only one hour after sunset as November closes out. It fades into the evening twilight in early December and eventually reaches conjunction with the sun. Mercury joins Saturn in the evening sky by the second half of November, but it will be so close to the horizon that trees and houses will most likely prevent folks from seeing it. Watch for a Mercury-Saturn conjunction next month. In the morning sky, Venus continues to burn with a yellow-white radiance low in the east at dawn. But it's getting lower with each passing day. Venus rises only one and a half hours before sunrise at the start of November, but only about 45 minutes before sunrise at month's end. Venus will vanish into the morning twilight during December, then slowly reappear during evening twilight in early 2018. This November finds Mars rising in the east well before the start of dawn of, mid of twilight, around 3.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time mid-month. Mars resembles only a modestly bright orange star well above Venus and the star speaker during early November. Mars and speakers draw slowly closer to each other with each passing day, and by month's end they are essentially side by side. Jupiter reached conjunction with the Sun in October, and by mid-November it reappears in the dawn sky, joining Venus and Mars. On the 13th, Jupiter and Venus make for a beautiful pairing in the morning sky. Well, that's all we have for this month. For more information on the night sky, visit the Widener Observatory Stargazing website. And don't forget about the stargazing sessions at the Widener Observatory, located on the fifth floor of Kirkbride Hall. Thank you. I remember to look to the stars. <laughs>